seems like a lot of people want to talk about volume of revolution, um, sometimes called rotational volume. And there are a couple methods. There's a washer method and there's a disk method. And the first method I'd like to talk about is the disk method. Um, there are two ways to do it, using a horizontal axis of symmetry or a vertical axis of symmetry. In this case, I'm going to use horizontal today. But I just want to be clear about some question that I've received. What's the diff when do you use the disk method? When do you use the washer method? Well, this is a disk, if you will. Um, I had said earlier that if you take a quarter, a, a quarter is a disk. A half dollar is a disk. A plate is a disk. However, if you put a hole in it, it becomes a washer. So this is a disk, and this is a washer. And if you think about it just for a second, to find the area of this, you just find the area of the circle. And to find its volume, then you just give it some width, and you multiply by the width, and then you get the volume of the disk. In the case of a washer, though, when we have something, a solid that has a hole in it somewhere, then what we would do is we would say, what's the area of this inside circle? What's the area of the entire circle? And then you subtract the area of the smaller circle from the larger one. And if I'm confusing you, I don't mean to, and I'm going to do a video on it, but I just wanted to make sure that we know the difference between disks and washers. Disks uh, are like plates, and washers are like washers that go over, over screws or bolts. All right? So hopefully that's helpful, and I just want to move on to this. I have a problem that I want to get into really quickly. So let's just start with this. What is it I really want to say about about this? I don't. I'm not going to go through this whole Riemann sum thing. But if you just indulge me for less than a less than a minute, that the, the volume of a solid, right, is actually equal to the limit of the normal partition. As a normal partition goes to zero, remember normal partition is is the thickest partition. You're saying is the thickest partition goes to zero, then the smallest one obviously goes to zero too, of pi, right, times the summation, i equals one to n, right, of all of those circles, right, x sub i squared. And we're gonna take. So what we're saying here is that we were gonna we take the volume of all of those things times the change in x etc and this is where we're going to end up and this is where I'm going with this is that what we really have here is this we have pi times the radius squared right and pi times radius squared that gives us area of a circle and then to get our width it gives us that would be our width so we have area here times width gives us volume right and we're going to add up all of those partitions so let's go ahead and do a problem I think that it will make some sense. It says find the volume of the solid form by revolving f of x equals sine, uh, I'm sorry, square root of sine of x, and the x-axis, where x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to pi, about the x-axis. So if you take out your calculator, which would be a great idea right now, and you went from 0 to pi, this thing actually looks like this. Yeah, except it doesn't make that noise. Anyway, and this is f of x is equal to the square root of sine of x. And now what we're saying we're going to do with this thing is pretend this is a jump rope, and we're just going to jump the rope. And as we do, this thing will start to look like a solid, right? And it will kind of take on this kind of egg shape, and, and it will become a solid. So this is all we're going to do here is this. We're going to set this up. This is f of x. But remember, we want the radius. So radius is f of x. So we're going to go ahead and set up our problem just the way we, just the way we described it before, and is equal to square root sine x, right? And I'm going to go ahead and fill in this volume, and we know that volume is equal to pi times the definite integral a to b, right, of the radius. And remember, radius is f of x, right, dx. And then I'm going to go ahead and just fill this in and give this some concrete meaning and say that it's pi times the definite integral, and we said from 0 to pi, so 0 to pi, right, of square root sine of x squared. If you're taking the AP exam, this is really critical because you'll probably be allowed to use your calculator here. But I just want to make sure that you understand, if you're allowed to use your calculator, they are expecting you to speak a ton of calculus to them, and they're going to want to know. So what I'm asking you to look at right now is this, and we're just going to simplify this out. If we square a square root, 
that just becomes the inside function, doesn't it? So that takes us to this. So we're going to simplify this. This is crucial to get all your points from your professor or from your AP reader. So we're going to keep moving. Our simplified equation is going to be this, or right, is sine of x dx, right? Our squared went away because it undid this, right? So we have this as our volume. From here, it gets really, really easy. All we're going to do now is integrate, and I'm suggesting to you if you're taking an exam that you would write this out, especially if you're being allowed to use a calculator. And don't forget this pi value. That's what I did earlier today. And we know that the integral of sine of x is opposite cosine of x, right? As evaluated from 0 to pi. So this is should be going really, really well for you. The next thing you would say, so you... You simplified, you integrated, and now what you're going to do is, right, you integrate and we want to evaluate this. So we evaluate this using the fundamental theorem of calculus, which remember is f of b minus f of a is equal to area. So this is another thing that you might want to re remind your professor or your reader, and it would look like this. Pi times f of pi minus f of zero, right? is equal to our area. If you did all this math, you would get this whole thing evaluates out to 2. And remember, you have to multiply this, and pi times 2 is 2 pi, and there's our solution. I'm going to say this for the third time because I really want you to be successful at this. I want you to remember that when you're taking the AP exam or, or if you're taking a very, very mathematically oriented calculus course, what your professor or what your reader wants to see is all of your calculus. So the translation of this to this would be key. You saying that you know what volume is would be important. You showing your simplification would be important. You telling your reader that you're going to integrate and then going and integrating correctly, not losing your constant multiplier here. And then finally, in your evaluation of this, saying to your professor or your AP reader, hey, I'm using the fundamental theorem of calculus here. And as my last statement to you of, of calculus today, of this video, this answer by itself is not worth, right, it's not worth anything. So all of the math that you did previous to your answer is worth probably 90% of your points. That's certainly true of college calculus professors, I know for sure, uh, and also of your AP reader. So I hope that this helps you. And make sure you do tons of these problems so when you see this on your exam that you recognize that and, and look forward to it. Congratulations. Good work. Uh, your comments are terrific. And please subscribe.